afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Tundra Mission. Now, you might be wondering, Tundra Mission? Why are you driving in a Jeep? Well, I thought I'd ditch the Tundra today for a little bit of uh, Jeep action. For all of the, the folks out there who have missed the Jeep, I know it was a Jeep Gladiator, but we've also had the Jeep Wrangler on the channel. So, like I said, I've ditched the Tundra for the, the Jeep Wrangler today. This thing is a two-door. And you know, there are periods of time where I actually considered getting another Jeep two-door, uh, trading off the Jeep Gladiator for that. And I only have to jump in the Jeep Wrangler two-door, my wife's, this is my wife's vehicle, uh, to let me know why I haven't done that, right? Why I wouldn't get another Jeep Wrangler two-door anyway. Uh, let's go through. First of all, you may notice this dangly thing up here. I was going to take it down. I thought, you know, it's going to be stupid. It's going to be in the video and all of that. And then I thought, that's a great way to show how much movement there is in the Jeep Wrangler. You guys can see that thing bouncing around uh, for many reasons. One, it's windy outside. So I'm being buffeted all over the place by the wind in this traveling square that I'm driving in right now. I get to wave at other Jeeps, by the way. Uh, so you can see how much movement there is just from the cab or the body area kind of moving around in the wind. Not to mention the harder tires. This has a firmer ride. We've got some big old tires on here. Um, yeah, but the suspension, too, it also has a lift on it. So everything about this Jeep is non-comfortable, which really baffles me as to why my wife likes it so much. She must just be in love so much with the look of the Jeep that she's willing to ignore all of these other things inherent to the two-door Jeep Wrangler, at least one that has bigger, more aggressive tires and a lift. We have a three-inch lift on this thing, by the way which also is strange because she has to climb up to it and jump out of it every time she gets in. Not real far, my wife is like five foot six and a half or seven or something like that these days. But man, I, let's talk about fuel economy for a minute. You know, I just bought the Tundra and the Tundra is supposed to get better fuel economy than its previous versions, right? I drove it this morning on the freeway uh, my wife actually has uh, a little bit of jury duty coming up. So we drove down to see where the courthouse was for her so that she knows where to go. Look at that thing bounce around. But anyway, that truck was at 14.8 miles per gallon. And that was driving on the freeway. Now, let me add a little asterisk to that, right? It also had some previous miles on it that wasn't driving on the freeway. So it kind of averages that all together. I'd figure I'd probably be getting somewhere maybe in the 18 to, let's be very uh, optimistic, 20 miles per gallon if I was on the freeway on a, a long trip or something from a fresh tank of gas. This thing, I'm going to arrow down the meter over here. I'm going to tell you what it's getting right now. By the way, I'm running 36 PSI in these bigger tires. I also filled those up today. They were about a pound or two shy uh, on each tire. Now, I'm getting current average right now, uh, it says 18 miles per gallon. Now, that is just cruising down the road at speed. You know, that's that wildly fluctuating number. Right now, it says I'm getting 99 miles per gallon because I'm coasting. I mean, if this thing got 99 miles per gallon, it would be amazing. But anyway, the real average fuel economy in this, and this is her driving of it, it's not mine, uh, is 9.5 miles per gallon. What? I think there are dump trucks out there that get better mileage, better fuel economy than this Jeep Wrangler. 9.5 miles per gallon. By the way, we're on a rough road right now. You should see uh, some good movement in that little movement meter. That's what we'll call that. It's a movement meter. You can see it bouncing all over the place. And that is indicative of what I'm feeling inside this vehicle, right? I'm moving all over the place. And if you're very sensitive to that, I'm not overly sensitive to it. Let's just say I'm aware of it. 
uh, it is a much rougher ride, particularly when you go over like entrances into parking lots or things where they have that kind of cut curve. It really likes to jump around on those. It's just horrible. Uh, visibility wise, uh, you guys can see the headrests in the back. Now they could be removed. I'm not sure. I think they can be folded forward in this Jeep as well. But either way, with them up like it is right now, there is a lot of blockage back there. Also the spare tire. Now, again, a little caveat, we do have the bigger spare tire on the back to match all the rest. So it is up in the air a little bit higher, but you have to have that when you have a Jeep Wrangler, right? I mean, who doesn't do that? I don't know. Now, looking around the edges, all the pillars and all that stuff, the separators, uh, really for something that's a square box, you really can't see a lot out of here. And another thing that I think the Wrangler really ought to have is a bigger mirror. You know, the exterior mirrors, they're really quite small and they limit the visibility that you get outside of a vehicle that you can't see that well out of to begin with. Now, comfort-wise, from an ergonomic standpoint, it's pretty small in here. So I can reach everything. I mean, I can even reach over and mess with the glove box. Something I really can't do in the Toyota Tundra. I mean, it's cavernous inside. You have way more space. It's not horrible. I don't feel claustrophobic in here, really, but I'm obviously aware of the limited space or smaller space compared to what I have in that brand new Tundra Crew Max. Would I trade the Crew Max for a Jeep Wrangler two-door? There is absolutely no way. Not to mention, I bought the Tundra because I'm gonna be taking a long distance trip. I couldn't imagine riding 17, 19 hours one day in this thing and then there's nowhere to sleep in here. I'd have to rent a hotel room. And then jumping in the next day and driving another five, six hours, seven hours, whatever it's gonna be. Uh, so it would be horrible. There's no way I would do that. The only area I'd say that this is far superior to the Toyota Tundra is of course off-roading. It's small, it's compact, it's four-wheel drive. Nothing beats a two-door Jeep Wrangler when it comes to off-roading. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to get in. I was really just getting this thing ready for her to take down to the courthouse coming up. And uh, I thought I'd ditch the Tundra, take a little ride in it for you guys, and uh, kind of reassure myself, that was a railroad track, reassure myself as to why I'm not buying a Jeep Wrangler. Leave a comment, let me know. If you've got the Wrangler, ever had one, particularly the two-door, were you actually, and be honest, happy with it, or did it beat the hell out of you? I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.